So what was on pro- the menu? Seven yeah. steaks? <laughs> two whole well, chickens? I went and got a giant Wagyu steak for him. So I'm ecstatic about that. On 95.7 The Game. I tried to get Mama Boss on today. Okay. She's traveling. I mean, she's no, traveling. No, come on. Yeah. She's probably going to Vegas. <laughs> exactly. Um, I Is Nick p- going to play tonight? The word is most of the starters. Okay. Here, real quick, put put that on hold for for one second because okay. we got to pay off this Giants thing. Yeah. Who who's the guy? Who's catching tonight? Andrew Knapp. Andrew Knapp with a K. Middle name Taka. <laughs> it's a one, but I don't care. It's Friday. Oh, Friday at four thirty. That makes me laugh. <laughs> if you had yeah, done yeah. that on Tuesday at three, I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're a good audience on a Friday. <laughs> Oh my angry, God. Jeff. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Anyway, Anyhow. Andrew, take a nap. Actually, yeah, it's a pretty good series to have somebody in the lineup with the last name Nap. That's that's perfect. The Giants and Mariners are playing, and it sound an alarm the first time someone gets a hit because it's probably not going to happen until at least the sixth inning. So the Giants are like, you know, we need we need someone with the last name Nap. So he's a catcher who was on the Giants a couple years ago for a hot minute. And and earlier today, Bags got a hold of the lineup. And he's like, well, Andrew Knapp is catching. And he he literally wrote, so there's that. (laughs) Who are you? (laughs) We're all like, okay, Bags, we totally believe you, but there's one problem. Andrew Knapp is not on the Giants. Yeah. That sounds like a problem. If you go to the internet, Andrew's on the Rangers. But Andrew Knapp was in the Giants lineup. So how? So, Grandy, what? Now, the roster thing came out about an hour and a half later that the Giants have DFA'd Jackson Reitz. Hmm. How'd they acquire Knapp? Did they, was he a free agent? Yeah. So the last transaction for Nap that we had when the lineup came out was that the AAA affiliate, I believe, of for, the Rangers had, Texas. had released him. Okay. So he was just a free agent. So he was released from AAA, and the Giants are like, that looks like one of our guys. I just, let's start him tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once again, Joey Bart is a pirate. Just want to put that out there. Joey Bart is a pirate. And Tom, it's been so long since he's played, I can't even remember his last name. Uh, Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. Is um, having all kinds of injury problems and unavailable. And Casale's probably just exhausted by now. It's like, I'm out here catching for you guys every night. Bailey's on the injured list. Jackson Reitz is not a major leaguer. Neither is Andrew Knapp, but whatever. Whatever. So, Andrew Knapp, uh, cheers. Here's to you. Is playing for the Giants tonight. Right. Go out there and uh, and get it done. And you're going up against a team that has a team batting average of 216. <laughs> I'm not making that up, Mark. No. We and actually, I'm looking at the history of batting averages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the modern era of baseball, there are a grand total of three teams. Actually, I'm sorry, two teams who have ever finished a season – with a worst batting average. In 2020, the COVID Cincinnati Reds okay. batted 212 over 60 games. Take that with a grain of salt. It was a short season. It was COVID. And then in 1968, the the Yankees hit 214. Other than that, the A's two years ago hit 216. The Mariners are hitting 216. This is one of the worst hitting teams by average. In the history of baseball. We don't want to spend too much time on this, but Grandy put together the most amazing package of Mariner stuff. It was great. That you ever, and, and, and we really should mention some of it because it's literally stunning. We're not talking about a team that's struggling. We're talking about a team that at once upon a time this year had a 10-game lead in their division. And the moment they got it, they looked at each other and went, I got an idea. Let's see if we can hold it without ever getting another hit ever again. And the answer is no. Listen to some of this. Since 1969, there have been 1,446 baseball teams that have played at least 153 games. Almost 1,500 teams have finished 153-game schedule. 
The 2024 Mariners currently rank dead last in both batting average and strikeout percentage wow. of all of those teams. That, that sounds bad. Assuming that they play 15 more games. Okay? Um, the Mariners have the second worst record in baseball since their 10-game lead on June 18th. 10-game yep. lead. And then uncork the second worst record in baseball, which is actually the worst record in baseball because yeah. the White Sox don't count. They were 44 and uh, 31 when they were up by 10. They had just beaten Cleveland <laughs> on the road on June 18th. <laughs> 44 and 31. They've gone 20 and 35. This one's so fun. I love this next one. Y'all heard of Logan Gilbert, the starter for the Mariners. He's got a mean uh, set of breaking pitches, Dibs. <laughs> I've heard that. Logan Gilbert's record this year is seven and nine. It's now seven and ten, by the way. It's seven, an old stat. seven and ten. That's more losses than wins, despite a whip and nay nay of zero point eight eight. For those of you who don't speak baseball stats, that's stupid good. Okay, walks plus hits over innings pitched, well less than one, 0.88. Freddie, the last qualifying baseball pitcher to have a losing record and a sub 0.9 whip was Ed Walsh. You remember Ed? Oh, Ed. Easy Boy. Ed. Easy Eddie, we called him. He played for the White Sox. In 1910. Oh, geez. It's been 114 years since somebody <laughs> somebody was able to achieve a losing record while pitching that well. The Mariners currently have a 194 batting average in the month of August. The franchise record for lowest batting average in a calendar month came in May 2021 of 199. Five points higher yeah. than they currently are in the month of August with just a, a few days left to go. And then here's the one that really will make you boogie, Giants fans. Raise your hand if you feel like the Giants sometimes send out starters who pitch really well and don't get run support and you don't win the game. You feel like that happens to the Giants All a the lot? Time, yep. Okay, it happens to the Mariners exactly twice as often. <laughs> okay? In 2024... The number of quality starts, that equals six innings at least and three runs or less allowed. That's a quality start. Yep. Anything that or better is a quality start. How many times has a starter gotten a quality start and not gotten the win? This should be called the Blake Snell Award. Mm. The Giants have had that happen 20 times. The Mariners have had it happen 40 times. Wow. Second place is 28. That's crazy. The Mariners have had it happen 40 times. Now, add into all of that a couple other things, which is A, the Giants don't hit the baseball, and B, the Mariners recently fired their manager on social media, <laughs> and you have got what I think is the most wackadoodle, annoying, backwards baseball series that we have seen all year long Andrew, take a nap, is the starting catcher for it. And it's an elimination series. Let's go. You don't win two of three. I don't want to even hear your name ever again. Well, even if you win two of three, it's probably not good enough. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're the Mariners, you are like the fade that they've gone on has <laughs> been so bad that your season's probably already over because the lead that you've blown has put you five and a half out in the division, but you're seven and a half out in the card. So unless you can catch Houston, which I don't like your chances, you're not going to win the wild card. So for the Mariners, it is real nut cutting time with 34 games to go, but you got to focus on Houston. And just in the last 10 games, you've dropped five games to Houston. So the lead that you've blown has been so dramatic that, I think that, that it's over for the Mariners, and this is really, you're getting into must-win time for the Mariners. You know what, though? Let's have some fun. Um, Mariners and Giants, fan graphs, current playoff odds. Oh, yeah. I will give you a plus or minus 2% in either direction. For, for both? For both. Okay. Can you nail both the playoff odds for the San Francisco Giants 
and the Seattle Mariners. Uh, let's start with the home team, uh, the uh, Seattle Mariners. There it Their is. Their playoff odds, plus or minus 2% in either direction. The Mariners. What do you believe it is? They are 64 and 64, as you said, five and a half games out in the American League West. Well, and the card is not something that's really possible. They're seven and a half out of the wild card, five and a half back at Houston. I would put them at 11%. They have an 11% chance. I'm very, very impressed. 10.8%. 10.8%. Let's go, Dibber Claus. 10.8%. That is a very, very impressive guess. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to thank you for coming to our game, and because you're so good at it, let's play it again. The oh, San boy. Francisco Giants are 65-64, and 64, just a plucky 11 and a half games behind the Dodgers. Yeah. But four out in a wild card race that also includes another team that is tucked in between them and the Braves. That would be the New York Metropolitans. Their playoff odds are... Well, the math is there, as I've said all along for the Giants. Four and a half out uh, in the... Or four out in the wild card. Not bad. The division, that race has been run, but still another team to pass. I'm going to put them at 13%, Mark. 13%. Okay. (sighs) So sorry. Uh, Really wish we could reward you for getting one out of two. That is 50%. That's an F. Somehow Damn. the San Francisco Giants only have half the playoff odds of the Seattle Mariners. What? 5.7%. Jeez. That, I mean, the math. That, sorry about that. Five. I gave you too much faith. I figured being only behind one team to get to the wild card, and you're only four back. Well, the issue is, is I think schedule. Fangraph sees this as the Mariners having a shot at two different playoff spots, and the Giants only have a shot at one. But the Mariners don't have a shot at the wild well, card. Well, now that's your opinion. Fangraphs disagrees Sure, with Fangraphs can. Two and a half percent chance at the wild card, but an 8.3 percent chance at winning the division, while the San right. Francisco Giants have a 5.7 percent chance of clinching the wild card and a 0.1 zero percent. Zero Point zero. Zero point zero. Yeah, fair Chance enough. of winning the division. Well, and honestly, the Mariners are seven and a half back in the card, and they're also behind two teams. So They can get hot now. Sure, they were <laughs> hot. They had their hot moment. And I, I think Fangrass uh-huh. is looking at their plus 14 run differential as opposed to the Giants minus 11 as a reason why Probably. they would lean on that. Uh, your, your quality start thing had me thinking about Logan Gilbert because – and I just looked at his game log. He's had a very interesting year. He's had 11 quality starts that did not result in a win. Jeez. But he also, his most recent outing, he went four and two-thirds and he gave up six earned. And he had an outing earlier where he went two and two-thirds and he gave up seven. He had an outing where he went four and he gave up eight. He's got three disastrous outings on his uh, resume this year so. I don't know if he's going in this series, but... He, he is not. Ah, it's too he bad because he's slated. vulnerable. He is not slated to Coming go. Coming off a stinker. Uh, the Giants will face Castillo, Kirby, and Wu. Okay. Can I get a Wu? Totally. You can. Yep. On Sunday, he'll pitch for the Mariners, while the Giants will throw Hayden Birdsong, Blake Snell, and Robbie Ray against his old squad. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. Hanniger still up there with them? Yeah, he's around. Yeah. Okay. He's going to go, go swing bat now. <laughs> you can't <laughs> stop it. You really can't. <laughs> Sunday's projected starter, Brian Wu, by the way, native of El Cerrito. Hey! Evan Giddings mm-hmm. country. Okay. That's Giddings country. Yeah, yeah. He's got like a 2.2 ERA this year. Okay. Yeah. Wait till he faces the Giants. to go down. Is he Evan's age or is he younger than Evan? Do we know? I think he's a little younger. He, he's like a rookie this year. Okay. I think he made his debut last year. He's All right. So let's have some fun. How many How many runs the Giants can score this weekend? In, In the Seattle. three games? Yeah. Nine. <gasps> Ooh. I think I'll take the under. Take, I mean, <laughs> how sad is that? Well, the Giants I think are I a, will. They're a three-run machine. They tend to score three. Oh, they can do a zero or a one also. They can, they can do it. They can do it. Yep. So if you, you, you give me nine and a half, I'm taking the under. No, I'm giving you nine. I want nine and a half. Yeah, you're stuck on nine, unfortunately. Well, that's only a push then if, I, if I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I think I'd set the line if I had to put a hook on it at eight and a half. Oh. Eight and a half is because you wouldn't go over eight and a half. Well, that's just, just like if you get one six, you know, like if you get one guy that has a bad yeah. outing, 
Um, but also if you get shut out one game. <laughs> one game, right? Remember when we did this for the Rocky series earlier in the year? It was fun. and it, but, but it was fun, but they had one game where they blew up, and by game two, I think we set it at like 15 runs for a three-game series or, yeah. or, or 14. And they passed it with ease halfway through the second game, and then they barely scored again for the rest of the weekend. Yep. It ended up being really close. So, I don't know, man. Giants averaging 4.31 a game. Are they really still? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're right at the league average, 556 runs Dude. in 129 games. They went to Oakland and had scored one run at the end of 18 innings. And then they hit two home runs and won that game 4 to 2. Then they, they they just took on the White Sox, the worst team in the history of ever and scored 11 in a three-game series. 11. Yeah. Against the White Sox. Yeah, give me the under. What do you want to put on it? <laughs> what do you want to put on it? I don't know. Set it at nine. I'll take the under. I got it at eight and a half. <laughs> and I already bought it at nine. You can't, like, if you move you the line. You balked at nine. I, no, I didn't. This I is said, like Brandon Ayuk. You I didn't said, sign I, it at nine. But you said nine. I said, give me the under. And then I moved it to I eight went, and a half. No, but I had already been to the window. All right, you, you can have under nine. What do you want to put on it? I don't know. What's interesting to you? Lots of things. All right. Name your price. <laughs> what do you want? You already owe me. Yeah, but you owe me too. I paid you off. I know. We're good. You're the only one in arrears, yeah. so to speak. Cook something for me. All right. Done. And I'll cook something for you. You're good. You're good. I uh, Yeah. I mean, I've never cooked and brought, but I'll, I'll cook something for you. Yeah. I'll make you a little something. Cook and bring. All right. It's a cook and bring. All right. Over under nine. And if it lands on the number, we got to cook and bring for, for Grandy. <laughs> yeah. Grandy wins on the push. Well, no, I mean, whatever. If I'm going to cook, I'm going to bring it for everybody. Well, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. All right. I'll bring it for everybody. And everybody means you, Grandy, and Lucas. Is Lucas here next week? Yes. No. All right. I thought he was yes. gone. <laughs> the following week, he's gone. Whatever. The following so week. am I. Well, I'm gone next week, yeah. Who takes off the first week of football like a weirdo? That is weird. You're a weirdo. Totally. A weirdo. All right, it's a cook and bring. Do you know who we're getting to fill in for you next week when you're gone? No. What Jim Harbaugh used to say? Nobody has it. Who has it better than us? Nobody. Nobody. You're going solo dolo? I mean, Grandy. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Grandy. Grandy, Grandy will talk. You'll, You'll allow talk. it? Yeah. All uh, right. Well, we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's the Dwayne Dibley Memorial. We're I know heading it up is. to uh, I know it is. Humboldt, Humboldt County Fair in Ferndale. Looking forward to it. So check this out. Um, I made the point earlier that the 49ers have sort of become America's clickbait team. And I and, and I, I do still I sit here today as annoyed as everybody is with the IUK situation. I still sit here today and stand by this. The Niners are fine. I really do think everything's fine. Until it's not. It, it, like, I feel like the fan base feels like the Niners are 0-3. They're 0-0. Oh and, oh. and, and, and everything that you're worried about right now might not be a thing in two and a half weeks. Ricky Pearsall might have a uniform. Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk might have uniforms. And, and everybody will be healthy and look. Like, that's totally possible. So there's no freak out yet. But what I do think has happened is the name value... The uh, the nature of where they've been uh, over the last few years and have come so close. The fact that the fan base has traveled so hard and had such an imprint across the country, it has made content creators realize if you yell into if you run into a room and scream Niners, it's kind of like running into a room and yelling fire. In terms of the digital world, yeah. So let's play with some of this. Chris Sims, supposedly Kyle Shanahan's good buddy. Chris Sims, pro football talk, talking about the most talented rosters in the NFC. You buy this? 49ers would be my four, definitely. One, hey, listen, you know, I, I think the quarterback is a hair overrated. They are getting up there in age. The the receivers, as far as, like, uh, Kittle, his age, the offensive line, other than Trent Williams, doesn't really have another guy that you would put in the marquee list of offensive linemen out there. 
defense, we know they're talented, but I think what I'm also taking into account is like, yeah, you're not going to have Dre Greenlaw near 100% anytime soon. Hufunga at safety is still working his way back, right? So there's some of that along with, like you talked about, the aging of the football team that still really, really talented. And Shanahan will probably, will, if he finds out, text me the middle finger emoji or something like this. But good. regardless, good. I'll make sure he finds they're, out. They're damn good. There's no doubt. But yeah, I just, I, I don't think they're quite the Lions or the Packers. Not this year. The Detroit Lions have a better roster than the 49ers? Yeah, I don't see it. Explain this to me. Well, even if you want to say that they have better skill guys, I don't know if they do. I don't know if their quarterback is better. Their quarterbacks played more football, and I like Jared Goff. He puts up better fantasy numbers or similar numbers. Yeah, I have to look year. at last year, but I think that, you know, the, the two teams, the offenses, even if you want to say that they're comparable, I don't think that they are. The Niners' defense is better than the Lions' defense. So if we're talking roster just from a fantasy football standpoint, then maybe, like, who has more guys get drafted higher in a fantasy league? That's a different conversation than whose roster is better. I think the Niners' roster is definitely better. Um, I agree with you on that, but it's becoming so popular. Yeah. And, again, I, I we're fully aware of our Role, role in this. Yep. I mean, they say it, we play it. Here we go. But but I I think that that has led to the bad feeling that a lot of you have about the Niners off season. We can talk about it some more. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy. We're presented by Fremont Bank, celebrating sixty years of full service banking with no compromises on Willard and Dibs.